This video will illustrate using the calculator for very simple lump sum calculation of translating a present value to a future value, so compounding forward at various compound frequencies. For the discrete version of that, I'll show you two ways, time value of money, but also just the manual calculation, and then we'll do it in reverse. That is to say, discounting a future value, in this case $50, back three years at monthly compound frequency or continuous compound frequency. So my common set of assumptions are here. Present value is $50. The stated interest rate is 6% per annum. Unless otherwise specified, input assumptions should always be in per annum terms. This could also be called a nominal interest rate. So this is the stated or nominal interest rate of 6% per annum. It's not the effective interest rate. Then in this case, I'll have a three-year horizon so that we are answering the question, what is the value, the future value of $50 today if it is compounded at 6% per annum at the end of three years? However, the compound frequency will differ starting with k equals 1, that is 1 period per year or annual compound frequency. As we increase k, the compound, the number of periods per year or compound frequency, naturally we expect that future value, the value at the end of three years, to be higher. All the way until we go to continuous compounding, that's as rapidly as we can compound, so that'll have the highest value here. If k is 2, two periods per year, that would be semi-annual compound frequency. K is 12, that's monthly compound frequency. And then I have here 250, which is a common assumption, 250 trading days per year. So that would be daily compound frequency. So before I use the calculator, let's just remind of the general format here where we say future value is equal to the present value multiplied by the quantity, one plus the rate divided by k, the periods per year, raised to the power of t, that's our horizon in this case three years, but to be consistent, we need to multiply that by k, right? This, is the, this gives us the future value under any discrete compound frequency. Its analog in continuous terms is actually pretty elegant. We just take E raised to the rate times the horizon. In this case, 6% times 3 will be 18%, and we exponentiate that to get the continuous form. Okay, so I'll do this now on the calculator, and I'm not going to do all the discrete forms. I'll just do the monthly, and then I'll do the continuous. Please note, however, first, if I just go into second format, I... Looked at the setup in a previous video, but just to remind that we have here in these variables in this worksheet, the ability to toggle between chain and AOS, which is algebraic operating system. Some people prefer AOS. I prefer chain, which is the default in the calculator, simply because even with AOS, there are occasions when we need to use the parentheses. This simple problem is one of them, and I don't like to get confused about whether I need to use parentheses or not. I use chain so that I have full control, but it does mean I need to be mindful of my parentheses and when I need to use them. Okay, so I'll go back out, and then when I will just look at the, we'll answer the question, if we want to compound on a monthly basis, this $50. So I start inside out, styles can vary here. I take the 6% divide by 12 periods per year. I add the 1. That gives me the value uh, 1.005. So that's really 1 plus the periodic interest rate. And then I need to raise that to the power here. And now I do need to open my parens and say it's going to be 3 years times 12 periods per year close parens. That's the power I'm raising at 236. I can say equals. That's now my multiplier. 
and I can take, uh, you can see 1.1967, I can multiply that by the present value or any present value for that matter, and I get $59.834, and you can see that's pretty much this value here. They're a match. Now, let me do it for continuous. Continuous is pretty straightforward. I'm going to take my 6%, multiply by 3 years, that's my exponent, right? And then I just need to access the function. Second function key. Here's my e to the x. That's my multiplier. I've already got it. I can multiply it by $50 equals. And you can see I get 59.8609. That's a match. Now, I did this manually, but the discrete versions, I can use the built-in time value of money keys, right? So let's just do this again monthly, but just using the time value of money keys. And so starting with N, recall we said it's three years times 12 periods per year. Monthly is 36 periods. That's my N. This is my interest rate per period. Well, I've already done that, but if I, if I just wanted to be safe, I could take the six. Divide by 12, it's half a percent per period. Give that the period. My present value is 50. Here, with payment, I'm just doing a straight compound forward. So there are zero cash flows per period, in this case, per six-month period. So I would say that's the key there, just to be mindful that we want a zero in payment. And then we're computing the future value um, and ignoring the sign, I get the same $59 and a little bit over 83 cents. So that's an alternative way to get to the same answer. Okay, so now I'll switch to computing the present value, and we'll just remind of the general form here. In discrete terms, if we're solving for the present value, the present value is equal to the future value multiplied by 1 plus the rate divided by K, the periods per year, so far the same, but we raise to the negative power in this case of negative T, the horizon, multiplied by K, the period. And of course, raising to the negative here is the same as taking the future value here and simply dividing by this quantity. If we want the present value in continuous terms, it's elegant as before. Only this time we take E and raised to the negative rate times the horizon. In this case, negative 3 times 6% or negative 18% will give us the continuous version of this discounting. Okay, so I will just do it again for K equals 12, or in this case then we're going to be monthly discounting. So if I start with a 0.06, my stated rate divided by 12 periods per year, I add the one, then I get my one plus the periodic interest rate, that's half a percent. I'm gonna raise that to the power, y to the x. I'm gonna open my parens here, and it's gonna be three years. However, here's the key difference when I'm discounting, I'm gonna change that to a negative and multiply that by 12 months per year, close my parens, get my equal sign, and then I've got my multiplier. So this is actually a discount factor. It could be multiplied by any future cash flow at the end of three years. In this case, it gets multiplied by my $50 future cash flow, and you can see I get 417822, which is a match. And now if I want to do it in continuous terms, Right, I just take the 6% rate, multiplied by three years. I get my 18%, but I make it a negative. I'm discounting instead of compounding. And then I do second function, e to the x, gives me my discount factor, and I multiply that by 50, and I get $41.7635. It's a match. Okay, so finally, I'll just do the monthly discrete using the time value of money keys. And we know that uh, 3 years times 12 equals 
36 periods, that's my N. My interest rate we know is, well, it's six divided by 12 periods per year is half a percent per period. My present value, that's what I want to solve for, so I skip it. I remember that in this case, simple discounting, no interim cash flows, zero is the payment. My future value is 50, and then I come back and compute my present value, and I get my answer. So that's showing you both ways. So that's compounding forward and then discounting back. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notified of our new videos. Thank you.